you think that the governor arbitrarily uses power to say that he he wasn't going to he was only going to protect a certain uh, certain class or certain um, certain people. That- I think what happened was there was no attention given to the collateral damage that was occurring, and I think that we realized fairly quickly. First, many things were learned in that first uh, few months. One is that if we used ventilators like we normally did, we doubled the fatality rate from forty percent mm-hmm. to eighty percent. That was really important. And Minnesota was fortunate that we learned because I think people were very much. Johnny on the spot, paying attention physicians, especially physicians in a lot of the larger hospitals that were taking care of so many COVID patients. We learned quickly, don't increase the pressure and force the air into the lungs. Instead, increase the concentration of oxygen and continue low flow. That saved lives. But I think the collateral damage was starting to mount up to the mental illness, the number of people that weren't going to the hospital, the number of breast cancers that weren't being diagnosed, the number of chemotherapy treatments that were being skipped. All these things were starting to pile up, but yet we still plowed onward as as if it was one one way to treat everything. So I think that's where I would have I diverted. I would have I would have leaned into the Minnesota citizens. I remember when the second lockdown came. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember, Jamar, but you could get a haircut. During the second lockdown, but you couldn't during the first. I got a haircut through and out throughout the whole time. Well, the way looking at your hair, I, I wouldn't be able to tell. Oh. Uh, just saying. Well, you know. But the bottom line is, the fact that there's, was that science? Or was that just dealing behind back room doors? And then if you look at the other thing that happened with the closing down in March of 2020, the ability for physicians to get their hydroxychloroquine prescriptions filled by pharmacists, G- Governor Walsh shut that down. And then on August 12th, he rescinded that port of his order. He never explained that to the Minnesota people. Well, probably because they're an the, idiot. Why during the surge, he took hydroxychloroquine off, off the plate and then later on put it back in. So if it was a problem, then why did he put it back in? I don't know. He's an idiot for putting it back in because we had another idiot that ran the country that kind of screwed up high, whatever the hell it was. Do you remember the Legionnaire's disease in 1976? No, I'm, people I'm were only at the ripe age of 43. Well, well, I thought you might have read a history no. book on that. No. Okay. Uh-huh. Anyway. If you look at 1976, there were people leaving this convention in Philadelphia. They were going home, and within the first 24 to 48 hours, they were getting pneumonia, and they were dying. Doctors desperately were trying to save their lives. We were pumping in IV fluids, IV antibiotics, using our big guns, and people kept dying. We didn't have a Tony Fauci. We didn't step in and wait for government to step in. We kept doing what we kept doing. And we we tried some old-fashioned antibiotics, and we stumbled across one called erythromycin. And all of a sudden, the erythromycin, which we never would have guessed would have been the successful one, started saving lives. And boom, we stopped losing people to Legionnaire's pneumonia. That's what should have happened here. But instead, there was incursion and intrusion by bureaucrats, unelected people, politicians, and everybody else telling doctors and patients, you don't get to do what you've been doing for the last decades. We're going to step in and tell you what you can do and when you can do it. What did the governor tell you? So wait a minute now. What What did the government specifically come in and tell you as a doctor that you couldn't do to treat this patient to save this patient's life they wouldn't fill my prescriptions they wouldn't dispense the medicines what, what's what's this? hydroxychloroquine okay now what's that i had a patient for? on the way over here today took my prescription went to the pharmacy the pharmacy would not fill it today that was a few hours ago it's still happening pharmacies are scared they're scared with i mean hydroxychloroquine is a very safe drug my wife was on that for 15 years and we're not even talking about using it long term. You're talking about hydroxychloroquine for five or seven days. And if it improves things 50%, wouldn't that 50% be something you'd want available, Jamar, if it was you or your wife to, to possibly cure was, her and keep her from dying of COVID? What's the science behind it? The science is that it's an immune modulator. It has antioxidant properties. It's a zinc ionophore, so it allows zinc to get into the cell more efficiently, which slows down viral replication. Those are scientific bases that we know and could help, but we weren't able to do that. 